Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuan. Today, let's get to know Mila the Mapusaurus. Mapusaurus is considered the youngest among the tribe of Giganotosaurini and the most specialized carcharodontosaurid dinosaur. What is to Giganotosaurini is like T. rex to tyrannosaurs. At first glance, it looks similar to Giganotosaurus, but there are many differences between them. The most prominent is that Mapusaurus had a tall spine. Different from Giganotosaurus that had a low, flat back, it had tall neural spines on the back, kind of like Carcharodontosaurus. Its pelvis was nearly square, with a relatively flat top. The neural spines of its sacral vertebrae were also high, so it looked robust when viewed from the side. But in fact, if you look at it from the front, you will see that Mapusaurus is relatively narrow and its weight is not that exaggerated. It might be a good runner that acts quickly. Let's look at the head of Mapusaurus. The fossil remains of Mapusaurus were discovered in a bone bed containing about 10 individuals, possibly 8 to 9 at a conservative estimate. All the fossils were scattered fragmentarily in the bone bed. Unfortunately, no complete skull was found. A lower jaw was unearthed here, and another part of the face there. Generally, people collected the skull fossil fragments, enlarged them to the same scale, and then pieced them together to get a complete specimen. These individuals are of various growth stages, some are juveniles, and some are adults. They are also different in proportions. So, to shape the body build, scientists usually enlarge different body parts to the same scale to restore its original appearance. The reconstructed skull looks similar to that of Giganotosaurus or Maraxis excavated later. A typical feature of this type of dinosaurs is to ridges on the top of the skull, whose surface is quite rough, forming the highest point at its lacrimal horns. Unlike Allosaurus, whose lacrimal bones developed into independent horns, those of Mapusaurus were relatively smooth and might become small spikes in its childhood. Another feature is its brow bone with a worried frown. With a lump on it, it's drooping downward like this, those are such dinosaurs' features. But Mapusaurus has its own distinctive features. First, the shape of its maxilla distinguished it from other dinosaurs, making its face look square after being reconstructed. Second, it has a special face. Like T. rex, members of Giganotosaurini also possessed rough decorations on their face. According to our current understanding of animals, structures with such decorations indicate that the skin epidermis of that part is very hard. The face probably bears hard skin, composed of large scales or large nodular tissues, just like crocodiles. Mapusaurus had such a structure too, but its structure appeared shallow. At present, we are not sure whether this is caused by fossil preservation, or it was like that when alive. Maraxis has the most complicated structure for this part, Giganotosaurus relatively less complicated, and Mapusaurus the simplest, which is likely to be related to its evolution. So, when we restored this part, we still made some exaggeratedly large scales, but as a whole, they look flatter than the other two dinosaurs. These scales seem to adhere to the skin closely, a complete lower jaw of Mapusaurus was discovered, so it's used as a reference to other Carcharodontosaurids, whose lower jaw fossils were not found. To be exact, the lower jaw is not that complete, since the middle section is absent, but thankfully the two ends are relatively complete, so, we know the entire dentition of its mandible teeth. Different from Giganotosaurus, its lower jaw extended all the way to the rear. As a member of Carcharodontosauridae, it also had sharp teeth. A complete maxilla was found in its upper jaw, and each side contained 11 to 12 teeth, a figure approaching that of a Giganotosaurus. Besides, we can speculate what the whole body of Mapusaurus looked like. The largest specimen is 11 to 12 meters in length, and it's said some larger ones can reach 13 to 14 meters, but the fossils are too fragmentary, so there is no solid proof. A relatively intact scapula of Mapusaurus has been found, which appeared thinner than that of Giganotosaurus. This probably means its forelimbs were more degenerated and smaller than Giganotosaurus. But we didn't make it too small, because this just shows the part of the scapula, and thin scapulae can also be interpreted that its forelimbs were more flexible. 
However, in any case, Mapusaurus' forelimbs were as short and tiny as those of Giganotosaurus, just like this. The overall proportions were sort of like T. rex, which also had tiny arms. Relatively complete hindlimb fossils of Mapusaurus were also found, showing that its hindlimbs were quite long and stout. Its ilium was long, and the upper side was straight, which means it was powerful. Its neural spines were high, and connected to thick and strong muscles on both sides which proves it was really huge and heavy when it was alive. The neural spines can put more weight and strengthen its body. Now we come to its tail. Like most dinosaurs, the muscles on its tail can be divided into two groups, the one on the top and the one on the bottom. The lower muscles, namely the ones of the tail itself, were connected from the back of the ilium like this. Now we know that most theropod dinosaurs have skin in the front of their legs, which is connected to the skin on the sides, but the sides of the entire body are wrapped in skin, like birds today, and so is the tail. Such a structure actually limits the mobility of dinosaurs to some extent. Still, for many theropod dinosaurs, including Mapusaurus, the skin is connected at a relatively high position, which means such animals move fast. Similar features can also be seen in ornithomimosaurs. Through the complete skin of this part of some ornithomimosaurs, we speculated that for this type of dinosaurs, a point above the knee is a proper position, where the skin is connected, which matches the range of stretching when they kick their legs. It's a pity that we still don't know what the skin of this type of dinosaurs looked like. Generally, by reference to Allosaurus, we add delicate small scales and make some wrinkles on both sides of its neck where it often bends. To match such a large head, its mouth could open quite wide to swallow large prey. As for its feet, since Nomopusaurus foot fossils were found, we restored its feet based on the toes of Merixes and slightly enlarged its second toenail, similar to that of Dromaeosaurids. There are no identified hindlimb fossils for Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus at present. The only thing we can rely on is the Meraxis, but it shouldn't be as extreme as that of Meraxis. Meraxis may be just an exception with very large toes. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Mila the Mapusaurus. Thank you all.